Live from KSAT 12, the news at 5 starts right now. Our top story this evening, fueled by gusty winds, a fire destroyed a near north side home overnight on Old Moss Road. Our Paul Venema reports that the homeowner, an elderly woman, managed to escape but suffered smoke inhalation. By the time firefighters arrived, the flames had a firm grip on this single-story home. Neighbors say their first concern was whether the woman who lived here got out. When I came out, I, would, I didn't know whether she had or not, but she was, the EMS, EMS people had her. The woman who lived alone was taken to the hospital to be treated for smoke inhalation, but is expected to be okay. Barth said his next concern was for his home next door. And with the wind, you know, it's still blowing kind of that direction. I was worried about the thing spreading. It was a frightening ordeal to awaken to at three in the morning, he told me. It's a lot of firefighters and flames and especially on the roof, you know, and uh, which concerned me. A firefighter suffered back injuries fighting the stubborn blaze, but his injuries, we're told, were not life threatening. The home appears to be a total loss. The first thing you think is what, you know, what's the cause here? Is it electrical? Is it something else? That's also what firefighters are trying to figure out. Arson investigators were on the scene here last night beginning their investigation. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. Two people are in custody after an overnight chase with Bear County Sheriff's Office deputies that ended on the southwest side. Deputies say it started after 11 p.m. on Friday when they tried pulling over a driver. Deputies eventually arrested him after he crashed his truck in front of an AT&T building over on Southwest Military Drive. The driver now facing charges of evading arrest and stealing a vehicle. A woman was also taken into custody, but deputies say she was being held against her will. A shooting at a house party, party leaves one person shot in the neck. It happened around 1.30 this morning on Allegheny Drive on the northwest side. Police believe a fight led to someone shooting the victim. The shooter, when not at the scene, when officers arrived. The victim was taken to University Hospital in serious condition, and police say the suspect could be a minor. 33-year-old Robert Katara is behind bars tonight and accused of uh, sexually assaulting a former 16-year-old student. The arrest affidavit states Katara had been the victim's cheer coach since she was 10 years old. Katara is accused of taking the victim to a nearby hotel, providing her with alcohol, and then sexually assaulting her. The affidavit also states another incident happened when Katara allegedly asked the victim to babysit his child. Instead, the victim says she was assaulted. San Antonio police asking for the public's help to identify this burglary suspect here on your screen. The incident happened on East South Cross Boulevard on New Year's Day. Police say a building and customers' cars outside were burglarized and damaged. Anyone with information asked to contact the East Property Crimes Unit at the number on your screen. Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg has rolled out his new phase of his campaign. He was in San Antonio this morning to launch his bus tour of Texas. As Katrina Weber reports, the billionaire businessman says he's traveling the state to bring his message directly to voters. With a packed house at Viva Via, candidate Michael Bloomberg wasted no time getting down to business. We are here to win this election. And I... And I am running to defeat Donald Trump. Although he's one of many still seeking the Democratic nomination, the former New York mayor's focus was already a step ahead. Love just doesn't close its door to refugees. He talked about how he'd handle the presidency on issues from immigration to education and health care to background checks for guns. But when the law was written, the Internet and gun shows didn't exist. And so those, the law doesn't apply to them. That's the only thing that we need changed. A group gathered across the street was not so easily convinced. Others, though, liked what they heard. I'm glad he came. I think it's important for him to appeal to all of us in Texas. Bloomberg says that's the whole point of his bus tour, to talk directly to voters. It's no accident that Bloomberg chose San Antonio as the place to kick off his bus tour. He says he sees it as a growing city with good leadership and an important part of his campaign puzzle. We are going to finally turn Texas blue. Political parties, though, don't matter to Yolanda Sutter. She came seeking a candidate to bring the country together. We cannot be divided. We all are the same. We need to join. This was Bloomberg's third trip to Texas, and if all goes as he hopes, he says it won't be his last. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Well, San Antonio is on the nation's radar and people are moving here in droves. Census data says it's one of the fastest growing cities in the nation and with all the people moving here, home prices are going up and home availability is going down. We've previously reported on the increasing housing market in San Antonio and an increasing homelessness problem in the city. There are various circumstances that can lead to homelessness and Mayor Ron Nirenberg wants to make sure people are getting the services they need to get people back on their feet. Part of that process is understanding where people without a home actually live. And so what we're doing is we're working to uh, find uh, where the homeless encampments are, are taking place and really help to get those folks into a continuum of services and understanding that homelessness is a symptom, not a cause, often associated with mental health issues, substance abuse issues, uh, domestic violence issues. KSAT's Max Massey sat down with the mayor to discuss his vision for the future of San Antonio. Topics include transportation, the census, homelessness, green spaces around the city, and how San Antonio can differentiate itself from Austin. To hear more on that conversation, tune in to GMSA tomorrow at 8 a.m. It's part of our new series, Leading SA. It is unbelievable video showing a runaway tire crashing through the window of a restaurant, nearly missing a worker inside. It all happened in Houston. Take a look. The restaurant owner says the tire launched from a dump truck that lost its back axle on the nearby freeway. It rolled several yards across the parking lot, hitting the window frame with glass shattering everywhere. The employee says he was sweeping when the tire crashed into the building with glass cutting his face. This tire traveled throughout the parking lot, missing all these people and all these vehicles. I still just keep thinking, how is he alive? He had an angel on his shoulder yesterday. We're told three people were inside enjoying a meal when that happened. Fortunately, they were not injured. Manor ISD, just east of Austin, is out $2.3 million from a phishing scam. Investigators say the phishing email was sent to multiple people at the school district, and it was one single person that responded. The money was sent through C three separate transactions. Investigators say whoever paid didn't realize the bank account information was changed, and it was being sent to a fake bank. School officials say they have a strong lead in the case, but no arrests have been made.